guess I just want to know, or I guess my question is, why is it that atheists don't believe in God? Because we haven't been presented with sufficient evidence to, to warrant the belief. And it, okay, also, it mean, would also help, too, to define whatever God you're talking about. Because yeah. uh, uh, in my years on this show, I've, I've found that the, pretty much every caller has a different idea. Some of them just think it's a word. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I don't, well, I guess I just mean like a creator of the universe. Sure. I can tell you this. I or, used to be a Southern Baptist. I used to be a believer in some version of the Christian God. And I'm not now because I found out that the reasons that I have for believing were either fallacious or flat out wrong or unwarranted, and that prompted a bunch of study uh, and investigation because I wanted to find out, okay, maybe this Christianity isn't real, but, you know, could there be some kind of God and what kind of God could there be? And over the years, I, I kind of explored this issue from both the standpoint of science and philosophy, it, what kind of God could there be? And it left me with the conclusion that there's no good reason to think that anything that we would normally consider to be a god uh, actually exists. And in some cases, it, there's no reason to think it's even possible for that thing to exist. Okay, well, I get your argument about, like, the Judeo-Christian god. Uh, any god. I just, you know, like, okay, you, you asked about just like a creator god, something that created everything. What reason, yeah. what reason is there to think that there is a being, a God, that created everything? Well, I mean, it's like, how else did everything get here? So that's a fallacy um, called the argument from ignorance. Called the argument from ignorance, essentially that the explanation or the God proposal stands until it's proved wrong. In your case, the way it's formulated, uh, Richard Dawkins would call it an argument from uh, personal incredulity, that just that you can't think of any better explanation than God. Um, but to say, there's a way, let me frame it this way, there's been a murder, and Don comes to me and says, the butler did it, and I say, oh, wh what evidence or reason is there to think that the butler did it? And Don says to me, who else could it have been? <laughs> okay, but... I mean, do you think that's going to stand up? <laughs> that's not even going to get a trial. The DA is going to laugh your ass right out of the office. And that's why I think that we should do the same thing. The burden of proof is on the people who are claiming that there is a God or that there must be a God. And they, for millennia, have failed to meet that burden of proof. And that's why I can't believe. I understand that, but you don't think that, well, okay, so, like I, okay, so back when I was a teenager, I used to listen to the show all the time. And... I was an atheist for like three years and then I thought about it and I was like, how can there be like literally an infinite universe? Who says there is? But I know, but I mean, there's just nothing behind it. Like, oh, it's just here for no reason. Like, that's, what, that's, what makes you think that that's not possible? Even whether or not that's actually the case, what makes you think that that's not possible? Because what's the difference between that and then having nothing exist at all. Well, nothing isn't something that could exist because nothing isn't something. Uh, it, it, it may be the case that it is impossible for there to have ever been a nothing because that has no properties. But I, I think mean, the, the, the intellectually like, honest answer is, I don't know, and maybe I'll go try to find out, but until I know, I'm going to withhold belief. Yeah, we, we know there's something. And so the question you're trying to answer is, why is there something instead of nothing? Or where did all this something come from? And yeah. if you don't Those have an explanation, then the questions. only answer that is reasonable is to say, I don't know. It is not reasonable to say, man, I can't think of anything other than this hypothetical God model, so I'll just go with that, because that's not the way reason works. Well, I mean, but it's more than that, though. It's not that just there's just, like, stuff. It's just that, like... There's a whole universe and like the ecosystem, how everything seems kind of like everything does like work together, like in synchronicity or what's the word I'm looking for? I, I don't know what the word may be synchronicity, but I, I don't know how that applies. It seems like you're, you're, you're giving also another argument from ignorance, but changing the topic to biology. Yeah, I mean, it, so if you look at the whole of the universe, Stephen Hawking has pointed out that if the universe is fine-tuned for anything, it's for the creation of black holes. And the overwhelming majority of the universe is incredibly hostile to life.
Yeah, but just but even besides life though, I'm just seeing it like like stars and stuff, and how like the the stars can like juggle planets and stuff like that, and like you don't think that it's kind of like it just seems that it well, there's this thing called time. gravity, right? Yeah, I mean this is just just what the way gravity works. If there's you want a, to assert yeah. God made gravity, then then you you also have the burden of proof there. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I'm so saying, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, doesn't it seem like how am I going to say this? We are that, we are um, very fortunate, right? You're you're going to say we're fortunate because we live and we exist and we have some understanding of our ourselves and the universe and our, our place in it. And and gosh, isn't that miraculous? Is that kind of where you're no, going? Not even, not even us. I just mean just exist. Like, doesn't it seem that it is too? Is too? I don't want to say too. It's too like I don't know. Like synchronized to be a coincidence. Like, there, how could it just be that all this stuff just appeared and then it worked well, together? That's even, not. That's not. That's not an accurate description. It's not like all this stuff just disappeared. Okay, you have the laws of physics that govern the interactions of atoms and matter and everything, and over a great deal of time, things change. We are what evolved under these particular circumstances. If the, the model of the universe had been slightly different in some way, and then something else might have evolved, and it would be sitting here going, wow, isn't it neat that this universe seems designed for me? No, it was, the universe wasn't designed for you. The universe constructed you because you're the thing that could fit in the universe in this particular no, I don't, pocket of the universe, uh, space. I don't mean just people, though. I just mean the fact that... It, it doesn't just apply to people. It applies to everything. It applies to, you know, hydrogen and oxygen combining to make water. That's all governed by physics. It's chemistry. There's no reason to appeal to anything beyond the laws of physics or chemistry. And even if you don't have an explanation and you want to go beyond the natural... You need to first demonstrate that there is something beyond the natural that could be an explanation. Because otherwise, you're saying, wow, it's just, it just seems so odd that you know, stars and planets and, 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 and life and all this other stuff. And you're like, it seems to me the best explanation is a god. Well, why isn't the best explanation universe creating pixies? Why isn't the best explanation that the physical laws of the universe produce this, which is what science seems to show? So the universe just created itself? No. Then, so now you're talking about something different. Now you're talking about the origin of the universe, um, which we don't have an explanation for because we can't get beyond the Planck time in the first place. But there are theoretical models that don't appeal to anything beyond the natural. Or in the case of a multiverse, it, it is a supernatural prospect in the sense that it's not our local universe's nat nature. Um, but... The answer, the, the, the issue is, we don't have an explanation for the origin of the universe, and we may never have one. But not having one doesn't mean you're justified in saying, well, I can't think of anything, so it must be a god. The butler did it. Butler did it. <laughs> okay, so you're saying there's basically no point in believing until there's, like, solid evidence. Correct. Like exactly. Yay, we like that. Good answer. You shouldn't believe any claim until it is supported by sound arguments and empirical evidence. And yes, I know somebody's going to write in that there's an exception to this in the realm of philosophy where we acknowledge properly basic ideas and blah, blah, blah. But I'm talking about epistemic claims within the <laughs> natural world. Okay. And is it okay if I ask one more question or did I use up all my time? Oh, I'll let you do one more. We'll, we'll move on after that. Okay. So I just want to ask, like, so I know you've been doing this show for a long time. Over 20 so, like, years. What, what, is it, what is it that you, uh, like, what do you desire from all of this? Uh, for me, I like having the conversations. I like uh, trying to educate people on skepticism, critical thinking, on presenting an image of who atheists are so that we're not just, you know, baby-killing monsters trying to destroy God's favorite country. Um, and we get feedback from people who have changed their mind and come to realize that they didn't have good reasons for their belief, and so they were essentially forced by reason to give them up. Um, that's, that's about it. From my perspective, so a, a lot of religious beliefs I, I consider harmful, yeah. and I'm trying to mitigate some of that harm. And it works. 
but how how is religion harmful? How is religion harmful? Well, I just did a whole yeah. show on you know how he's done fifty four shows teen pregnancy rates and and all these things because our policies are are screwed up. And if your religion <laughs> tells you that you know people of the same gender shouldn't love each other or whatever, that makes you. Uh, advocate towards policies that marginalize individuals and marginalize their rights. If your religion tells you that uh, the God, God created the world and this undermines science, if, if religion tells you that you, you, the world is yours to subdue and control, that undermines the potential of taking action against climate change issues and pollution. Uh, if your religion tells you that, uh, you know, I don't know, Slavery. There's well, yeah, it advocates for slavery. It advocates for genocide, um, yeah. oppression, of women, bigotry, all sorts of things, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm really interested in any religion that wasn't harmful in many different ways, and most importantly, I care about whether or not something's true, because if it's not true and you believe it, that means there's something in your brain that is fundamentally flawed, because you have become convinced of something that's not true. And if that can happen for that idea, it can happen for all sorts of other ideas. If you have a flaw in your ability to reason, you might be an anti-vaxxer, a flat earther, a moon landing conspiracy theorist. You might be opposed to climate change legislation. You might, you might think that we should stop working to help feed the poor people and let Blue Apron do it. Right. Bad beliefs lead to bad behaviors. Yeah. And we have to share space on this planet. So what you believe informs your actions, and your actions affect other people around you, just as mine does and Don does. Everybody says. Everybody. I understand that, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't it seem that, like, government does more harm than religion does? Well, is the government doing more harm, or is religion doing harm through the government? By encouraging people to hold views and legislate those views. I mean, the government doesn't, ha doesn't have an agenda. It, you know, in the United States, we have a, a democratically elected republic, and so you have representatives who uh, go there. Uh, but it's not, apart from the Constitution, um, it's not like the United States has some goal of, let's be Jesus' favorite country. But there are people who vote well, who are convinced that we should be Jesus' favorite country. Well, the United States does have a goal of at least U.S. hegemony. Um, that's possible, um, but not necessarily wrong. So, if if you have, what do you mean? so when you take a, take a look at something like um, free speech laws, they're different around the world, and I think that some of the laws, for example, UK blasphemy laws, and and uh, this idea that you could be in trouble for causing offense, I find that offensive and asinine. Um, just so that somebody gets my favorite word out. Um, so we can have arguments and disagreements about the best way to do free speech and where, what the limits should be. Um, and it may be the case that the UK has the best model, and it may be the case that the US has the best model. It's probably not the case that Saudi Arabia has the best model. Uh, it's probably not the case that uh, Bangladesh has the best model where they are killing atheist bloggers. So we can have those discussions, but if you are convinced that you have the right case on free speech, uh, then teaching that to the world uh, is probably a good idea. D you know, democracy may be the worst form of government apart from all the others, that famous quote. Um, but we're not, you know, necessarily imperialistic, and if we were, I would oppose it. What do you, but like, what do you, what, you're saying the U.S. is not imperialistic? Correct. But I mean, they're but they're like they've invaded the Middle East. Yes, is it is it a war Isn't so that, that we like it, so that we conquer and own and build an empire? Yes. Yeah, okay, I fundamentally where, disagree. Where is it? <laughs> uh, please, please, that empire? please go find the uh, the uh, the government statement that shows that's the case. But anyway, I don't know what the hell that has to do with whether or not there's a good reason to believe there's a god. It does have something to do with whether or not, not religious religions can encourage people to do bad things. It can encourage people to do good things, but I'm convinced that by and large people do good things as long as you just give them a good reason, and maybe if you don't give them any reason at all. Okay, I understand. Is there any well, benefit, ir irrespective of whether or not there's a God, is there any benefit that religions offer that is 
true and good that can't be achieved without religion? Uh, I'd say yes. Okay, what? Culture. We, we've got plenty of culture without religion. I don't know, is religion no, responsible I mean, for yogurt? Because the culture that I know apart from, <laughs> from yogurt, um, there's plenty of secular culture. I mean, the concept of, like, how civilizations can rally upon, like, one idea and then, like, survive throughout the decades, or not the decades, but the centuries, based on this one concept. Usually, that's how, like, if you look at, like, how societies have evolved, it's usually around religion. Wait, wait, wait. did you just say usually? <laughs> Oops. Did yeah. you? So... <laughs> Unless it's well, always, it. unless it's always about religion, you just conceded the point. Well, I can't. Well, okay. Plus, well, what has usually happened is not at all relevant say. to what is possible to happen. The fact that we've had a history of one religion warring with another about which one has the right imaginary friend doesn't mean that that is in any way a true and good use of society to build culture to progress. In fact, I'd argue that it is the secular enlightenment that has dragged the, the planet kicking and screaming away from religion to where religion doesn't impact us as much and people largely don't care about it and churches are becoming more and more empty. And yet, as Steven Pinker pointed out, as I referenced earlier, both in his book, Better Angels, and in his new Wall Street Journal article, while religiosity declines, and Greg Arias Paul pointed this out too, the general state of the world, measured on a number of different axes for, for socioeconomic progress and improvement, we improve. We are living in the best of all possible times and the least religious of all possible times. Sort that one out. But but that's in the West, though. That's only no, it's not in the West. See, go search Steven Pinker Wall Street Journal. The data okay, covers the entire down. planet. Yeah, and this article okay, I mentioned I'm earlier in the show is is correlates religious belief with uh, social ills. And uh, you know, if it's true that religion helps build better better societies, then that would not be the case. So that it, so that's clearly false. I think, though, Stephen, we might have just exposed the biggest problem in the way that you think. I referenced an individual with book and article supported by data referenced. And instead of saying, hmm, I'll go consider that in case I was wrong, you asserted that it was only about the West, when the fact is what I just referenced is not just about the West. So you were completely wrong, but you were so defensive about the position you already hold that you wanted to paint that information as if it only applied in, you know, area A. And that's simply not true. So go out and do the research. Okay, that's fair. But I'm just saying that I can think of examples of where, like, for example, if you look at the Middle East, there's still high, or even India, those are highly religious cultures. Like, so to this so day, what? But, but, but I'm saying if you look at their way of life, Yes. It, have terrible. you looked at it? Because I'm not convinced that you have the first clue. I think that you have stereotypical ideas that you've just accepted without going to the data. No, I, I mean, I, I, I follow this stuff. Like, I, oh. I look at, I watch, I follow geopolitics, so I understand, like, what goes on in the undeveloped world. Is it, are, are they almost all universally better in every category than they were 30 years ago? No, some of them are Actually, worse. they are. So go research what the shit I told you to go research rather than just assuming you know. And if, 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 I'm okay. in fact, if I'm in fact wrong and you have data, present it, and I'll acknowledge that I'm wrong, and I will find a way to contact Steven Pinker so that he can know that he's wrong too. Now, I'm not citing him as an expert. I'm pointing to you because he has sourced data for this stuff. Okay, but I'm saying you think Iraq is better now than it was 30 years ago? In a number of ways, sure. In a number of ways, yes. Does that, does that mean it's good? Does that mean it's good? No, it could still be terrible. We're talking about improvement. I, I, okay, I, but I'm I saying, think, I'm saying I, that's object. Okay. I, I think so, you, you'll be able to find people that are worse off than they were 30 years ago. And, and I think that uh, Matt's really arguing for the general trend. Yeah, I mean, what you're doing is kind of going, oh my gosh, like I had a cat die of cancer this week. Oh my gosh, look how bad cancer is. Screw cancer. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, so you said that 
life is better off in, ob objectively in all these countries than it was 30 years ago. No, I didn't say anything about life. I said that we live in the best of all times and that by virtually yeah. every measure of societal health, we are better than we've uh, ever been. Uh, and it, it, God, uh, are you going to keep world. interrupting us? I'm trying to clarify this. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Google Steven Pinker, Wall Street Journal. Go read the article and call back some other time. <sighs> Thanks for your call, Steven. Or something. I'm snarky as hell today. It's been a while since I've done the show. <laughs> Got to get that snark out, huh? It's, well, it's, <laughs> it's frustrating because the call begins with, hey, why don't you guys believe? Because we don't have good reason. Oh, what's your good reason? Well, I can't think of anything, you know, can't think of any other way the reason that there's something. So we go through those fallacies, and then it's, oh, but why are you opposed to religion? Oh, because it does harm here, 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 and here. Yep. Oh, but, you know, yeah. You know, the fact that the world's getting better doesn't mean that we're anywhere near a goal, anywhere yeah, near... We've got a long way like, to go. Yeah. Utopia may be an incredible distance away uh, and will forever be beyond our reach, probably. But 